So welcome back everybody, Mike here. Today I am working on that uh, big oak tree and I'm gonna finish that uh, series on what is this tree worth? But I'm gonna take a little break here and we're gonna take this show on the road and I'm gonna go introduce you to a guy that does uh, chainsaw carving and we're gonna learn how to do something today. So I'm gonna head out there now and then uh, later on this afternoon I'll come back and finish up this tree. See you in a bit. So Bill, I told everybody how uh, quiet and laid back you are and you don't laugh much. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what we're going to do today. <laughs> hey, I'm Bill Schaup from Bill Schaup Wood Creations. Um, we're going to carve a little pine tree that the average homeowner can carve for his girlfriend for Christmas this year. You know those girls love those homemade Christmas gifts, so if you need some good brownie points and if you're like me and a little on the cheap side, here's a great way to come up with a homemade gift from your lady friend, all free from the woods. How you doing? You see how fast I cut through that log? Uh, got a whole bunch of little magic tricks for uh, sharpening my saw, but basically sharpen all my saws by hand. Uh, you got to spend the money and get a nice file either from Germany or Sweden, that kind of thing. But this is a perfect log for us. Uh, I usually get the logs dried out. I don't know. I'd say probably around six months. When the bark starts to come off them, nice and easy without a big struggle, then they're ready to chainsaw carve. it up <laughs> so I got this round cut off here it's a nice piece of white pine probably about 16 18 inches across maybe 20 
Uh, so I basically look it over. This looks like the nicest side, it's the widest side. So we're gonna make a nice little Christmas tree. So we kind of want it big and arky and you know, it gets wide like a cone at the bottom. So we're gonna cut a nice slab here. And this, this wood we used to throw away. Uh, this outside edge, you know, uh, you get thrown away. And really, you, at your local place, you know, you could probably go to your local sawmill. They got these slabs laying around. You could just grab a slab, any kind of pine. If they got it, if you had to get away with cherry or something, you could probably make it work and make yourself a pine tree and wouldn't really hardly cost you anything. So hey, we got our piece cut for our Christmas tree. We used the big, giant, this is the largest saw that Husqvarna makes as far as I know. It's a 3120, I think it's 118 cc's. Got the four foot bar on there. And I basically keep this saw around for ripping. So, hey, you know, instead of having to get the sawmill going all the time, turn around, you just rip basic things that don't have to be exactly perfect with this. And the trouble I was having with small saws, they were blowing up. Now ripping's really hard on the saw, it gets hot. So for this saw is like a big strong torquey saw. I ain't hurting it at all. And the massive weight, see how fast I rip through there, just shoots right through the bottom. And the wide bar actually keeps it nice and straight. So you don't have a whole lot of zigzagging. Uh, right. So those, those are nice things. It's, it's something I don't use all the time, but when you need it, you need it. Hey, we got our slab blade up here. Um, I put it up here so it's easier to see. A lot of times I just lay it down and, and just saw it out there because it's easier on your body. But if we're at a show, I do set it up like this so the audience can see what's going on. And uh, got my little safety chaps on. You can tell that uh, they've had a few incidents. So um, I did get smacked in here in the leg with this. Called the people up, bought them for me, said thank you very much. It was a Christmas present. <laughs>
okay now we got our little Christmas gift ready uh, some common mistakes bar makes tons of these um, getting your saw down low and getting underneath um, and then nothing in nature straight so the wonkier and the more twisted the, the better it looks um, I like it with a little like it's blowing in the wind kind of a thing and, and I carry that throughout the stump uh, you know when I first started making them they were like stiff little statues and, and this is way cooler um, this thing's gonna be a little bit wet but in the next step of this thing we're gonna burn it with a torch a little bit you add a little bit of green spray paint a little brown on the bottom and you have a nice gift for your lady friend we just do this and basically what this does it gets the fuzzies all off there and then when you put spray paint on it I like to use you know rust oleum good oil spray paint um, give it some background color so it's gonna have a nice little background color from the burning you see how it's just eating those little fuzzies right up but I normally let this sit for like a day or two it'll dry down a little bit it burns a lot easier than it is right now and then same thing with the base you know and I'd burn this base a little darker the other thing you got to kind of keep in mind is as you're carving it goes away from you the tree goes away from you and that's same with all animals you know you want to start its closest to you and goes away and then back around again um, so that's why we just don't use a, a plain flat slab for this and, and that first cut off the tree or off the sawmill works excellent for this and like I said it was normally something a slab that you'd, most people would throw away now you got a little piece of artwork and a gift Hey, thanks for watching. Now you know how to make your own customized Christmas tree for your lady friend, and you know they love those homemade gifts. So that was very nice of Bill to uh, show us how to carve our own Christmas tree, whether it be, you know, for your own decoration or if you want to give them as gifts or whatever. But yeah, that's pretty neat. You know, if you like chainsaws and, and trees, it's a match made in heaven right there. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go home and finish up part four of how much is this tree worth? I have some more wood to split and stack. That'll be the next video after this one. But like I always say, if you enjoy these videos, please click subscribe and hit the like button and uh, share them with your friends. Thanks.